Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be discussing weight and load transfer and how it relates to a vehicle's center of gravity, its wheelbase, and its track. Now before we get started we need to quickly define what weight transfer and load transfer are. Weight transfer is the movement of the center of gravity of a vehicle uh, and these are very small changes so they don't have that large of impacts uh, and this includes moving fluids like when you go around a corner you'll have your engine oil move over your fuel slosh over uh, body roll so if the body rolls then your center of gravity is going to slightly roll with it tire expansion that could lift up the vehicle a little bit raise your cg uh, things like that which actually alter the center of gravity of the vehicle now load transfer is different uh, and this is basically the shifting of weight um, or load as a result of acceleration forces on the vehicle so if you slam on the brakes you're going to have some load transfer to the front wheels so the front wheels are going to have more weight on them than the rear wheels uh, that's a simple way of looking at it but that's basically how load transfer works and essentially what you want in an ideal car is for all four wheels to be evenly loaded. That will give you the best uh, lateral grip, best braking, best acceleration, things like that. Uh, and the reason for this comes down to tire load sensitivity. So I've made a video on that, which I will link in the video description. Uh, you may want to check that out as far as finding out why it's best to have all of your tires uh, evenly loaded for for example, uh, holding a corner, you want all the tires trying to hold that corner rather than just one or two um, as it'd get overloaded and then slide out. So how can we decrease load transfer? Well, we're gonna look at some different ways, but basically you can lower the center of gravity of the vehicle. Uh, that could be done simply by lowering the vehicle, things like that. Uh, but most of this is kind of by design. You know, It's not necessarily like, oh, you take the car that you have and you change it so that it has less load transfer, which you can do. Uh, you, know, you can shift some weight around it and things like that. Also, uh, you can widen the wheelbase or the track, depending if we're talking on uh, lateral or longitudinal grip. Um, for less load transfer. So let's do a little bit of very simple math uh, and find out how much uh, we can actually influence uh, the load transfer depending on changing these characteristics. So here we have a model of the car. This is the front of the car as I've denoted here. And so X is the force uh, pressing up on the front tire. Y is the force pressing up on the rear tire. A is the distance between X, uh, the basically the center of this tire and the center of gravity. B is the distance between center of gravity and uh, the force Y. And then C is the height of the center of gravity. Uh, and in this case, we have it dead center uh, with one meter uh, A, one meter B, and half a meter uh, per C. But anyways, we're gonna do some quick uh, derivations here without numbers, and then we can apply those equations to this. So we know that if we sum the vertical forces, X and Y, it's gonna be equivalent to the weight of the vehicle pressing down on it. Pretty straightforward, you're just summing all of the forces in the Y direction. Now, if we sum the moments about this point under the center of gravity right here, under one G of braking or a one G lateral load, uh, you could do the same thing with cornering and have it be a horizontal force. But for this example, we're just gonna do braking. If you have one G braking, so you've got basically that thousand kilogram force, that's the weight of the car times gravity, so 9.81 meters per second. And you've got that 9,810 uh, Newton force in that forward direction. So you're gonna have that force, so the weight of the uh, vehicle times the distance from the center of gravity to that point, which we're summing the moments. Uh, we're gonna add to that uh, the force Y, which is gonna be multiplied by B, that's the length of its arm acting about this. And then we're going to subtract from that uh, X times A, and we're subtracting because X is operating in the opposite direction here. So the force pointing up uh, and then acting along this distance A. So WC plus YB minus XA equals zero. Now we can uh, substitute in for X here because X is equal to W minus Y from our first equation. So WC plus YB minus W minus Y times A equals zero. Uh, solve that out and you've got WA plus YA. So now let's solve this equation for Y. So we've got YB plus YA equals, move that over to the other side, WA minus WC. So Y B plus A equals W A minus C. So Y equals W times A minus C over B plus A. And this is the load on Y. So this is the actual load uh, in Newtons on this uh, rear wheel. Now, if we want to find out what percentage of the load that is, all we have to do is simply divide by the weight of the car. So if we know how much weight is on this 
uh, wheel, if we divide that by the total weight of the car, that gives us a percentage of how much weight is on Y. So that's what I did here, and you're simply going to divide by W, and then you get A minus C over B plus A. Now, if you want to solve for x, uh, you're simply taking 1 uh, and subtracting what you have on the other side. So if you know what this percentage is, it's just 1 minus that. Um, but solving that out, uh, regardless, 1 minus a minus c over b plus a, that's this right here. Uh, and let's create 1 so that we have a common denominator with uh, this right here. So just do b plus a over b plus a, which is equal to 1 minus a minus c over b plus a. So now we can say b plus a minus a, so then you just have b minus a negative c, so plus c, so b plus c over b plus a is the percentage of the load which is going to be on x. So now we can start solving it for these different uh, scenarios. So for our first scenario, we're under 1g of braking, we have uh, 0.5 meters uh, is the height of the center of gravity, and then our wheelbase is 2 meters with equal distance uh, between the center of gravity and each wheel. So, finding the amount of load on x, we do 1, as we have this equation for it right here, b plus c, 0.5, divided by b plus a, so 1 plus 1. So 1.5 divided by 2, 75%. So what that tells us is, under 1g of acceleration, we have 25% of the load transfer from the rear to the front of the vehicle. So now the front of the vehicle has to have uh, enough capability to hold 75% of the load. Uh, under braking. Now if we lower the CG we can alter this. So in this equation here instead of this 0.5 which is what we had for C previously C is now 0.25. So 1 plus 0.25 over 1 plus 1 that's going to give us 62.5 percent. So 12.5 percent load transfer from the rear to the front uh, and that's as you can see half of what we had above. So much less uh, load transfer simply by decreasing the center of gravity by half. Um, now you can do the same thing by widening the wheelbase or the track of the vehicle in the case of a lateral uh, turn. So what we have here is same, uh, same center of gravity height as above, but we've lengthened our wheelbase uh, by 25%. So 1.25 and 1.25 versus 1 and 1. So when we do our math, 1.25 plus 0.5 divided by 1.25 plus 1.25, 1.75 divided by 2.5, that gives you 70%. So that means 20% of the load transfer from the rear to the front, which is, as you can see, less than this 25% up above, and that was done by increasing the wheelbase. So these are different ways uh, in which you can design uh, for decreased load transfer in a vehicle so that you have more even distribution of your weight on all of your tires, and that will give you better lateral grip. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.